It goes without saying that you're one of the all-time great Chicago Bears, so I love your take on the direction the current team is heading in right now. We obviously saw them recently trade away the first pick in this year's draft, and all it does for me is tell me that this organization is fully committed to Justin Fields as their QB. So would you say it's the right move, and what do you think the future looks like for Justin? I thought it was a fantastic move. I, 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 um, I really hope that the next move is to make sure that they – continue to build the offensive line for Justin Fields, um, not just to have him there in the present um, physical form, but to be able to have some guys in front of him that can protect him, that that will allow him to use his, his mind, um, you know, as well as his feet, but uh, a lot less than, than his feet. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what Justin Fields can do. I think he's a guy that can really change the game much like the guy in Buffalo, uh, the quarterback in Buffalo. I see a lot of similarities. So uh, it's going to be interesting uh, moving forward. But I, I am excited to see what the Bears are doing. I know. And as a part of the deal, it sent the first pick to the Panthers and the Bears got DJ Moore, who should be a really good weapon for Fields. But in your opinion, I know you said he needs a few um, offensive uh, guys for him. But what moves do you think need to be made to get this Bears team where it needs to be? Well, you know, I, I think they're they're doing the things that they need to do uh, on the offensive side of the ball. You know, uh, Fields need all the weapons that he can get. I think, uh, you know, outside of a a good um, um, offensive line, you know, I just see that uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Elliott uh, got released uh, from the Cowboys. Man, I would love to see the Bears get Ezekiel Elliott. I would. I think that would be absolutely amazing uh, if they were able to get their hands on him. And uh, now you got two Buckeyes in, in the backfield. And I really believe that Ezekiel Elliott, you know, been injured, you know, maybe, a, you know, a step here, a step there, and maybe um, can shed a few pounds, um, get back in his original form. And who knows what in the world that could do for, uh, the Bears, uh, when the weather really gets bad and when it starts to snow and it starts to get really cold, turn that running game loose and, uh, you know, let's go. You know the Bears fan base very well, obviously. How hungry are they for a competitive team? And what would it mean to that city to win? It's for Super Bowl since y'all won in 1985. It's been a while. There's no place like Chicago. I mean, uh, Chicago fans, man, they, they get hungry. Uh, everybody gets involved. Uh, the, the city, there's nothing that brings the city together like a championship team. And uh, being able to have uh, a team that you're excited about and proud of um, with a lot of the pieces in place, uh, that could be really exciting. And, um, you know, the division right now, you, you've got Detroit. Detroit's playing some good, tough football. Uh, Minnesota, you know, trying to, you know, stay on track. And, and um, you know, of course, Green Bay, who knows what's going to happen there. But I think it's a great opportunity for the Bears to really step up and uh, take control of that division and, and um, be at the, be at the uh, front, front place uh, in that defense and be the front runners and, and move forward. Speaking of that 85 Bears team, USA Today recently voted the team as the greatest NFL team of all time. So do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to shy away from that. Of course, I always feel that, um, you know, the Steelers were a tremendous team. Um, you know, the Ravens had a run, you know, the year that they had uh, one year, a defensive year as well, like um uh, Chicago was more of a balanced year. It was a physical team in 85. Defensively, we were physical. Offensively, we were physical with Peyton and, and uh, McMahon uh, was was uh, certainly a character in his own right. But it was, uh, it was a team that brought along a lot of other things around the game. Um, it, it really invited the fans like no other time in history to be a part of what we were doing. We were doing it on the field and we allowed the fans to get involved by, you know, putting together the Super Bowl shuffle, which was one of the dumbest things that we've ever done. 
But man, it was fun. I loved it. <laughs> I tried to burn every tape I could find of, of the Super Bowl shuffle. Don't you dare. Don't kid. you dare. <laughs> but it was fun. Good. Okay. I was going to ask you, do you think the Super Bowl shuffles better or the gritty? Have you seen the, the gritty, what all the guys are doing? <laughs> you know what? I, the Super Bowl shuffle, I, I, I got to tell you how it happened. Please. The next I'd day after we lost our only game that year to Miami, the next day we had to film the Super Bowl shuffle. Oh. So, you know, we it was the best thing that ever could have happened because we were feeling down. We were pointing the finger at each other. We were mad at each other. And here we we have to do the Super Bowl shuffle. <laughs> so we got to get in a good mood. Uh, and then the song <laughs> is saying, you know, we're going to the Super Bowl. And we want to invite you to come along with us. And, you know, after we made that that video, we're looking at each other like we just did the dumbest thing that we could ever do <laughs> because we got to live up to this thing. You know, if we can't lose one game and now all of the teams, the rest of the teams that we have to play, we still got half a half a season left. So we're looking downhill and, uh, man, I'm telling you, these, these guys, every team that we had to play, even though maybe they they were maybe thinking one way, but after they saw the Super Bowl shuffle, the coach did not have to get them ready for that game. They wanted to be the team to knock us off. So it was a heck of a, uh, of a mindset that we had to have to really finish that year and finish strong. It really brought us back into focus. So... I think the Super Bowl shuffle, more than just something that was fun, it was something that really helped a young team, the youngest team that ever to ever win the Super Bowl at that time. Um, it really helped us get focused and understand that, hey, guys, we, we got to straighten up and, and we got to be oh. focused from here on out. We can't lose. Otherwise, we're going to be the biggest bozos in, <laughs> in Super Bowl history. Yeah, because you can't be out there dancing and be mad at the guy next to you. You got to be laughing, you know. <laughs> I love that story. Thank you. I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, something else that I know continues to make the news is the organization flirting with moving away from Soldier Field into the suburbs. Do you think that they should find a way to stay in that iconic stadium? Or do you, do you think the suburbs might be the move? I think moving the team... Uh, would definitely um, the the history of Soldier Field and the 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 love affair between the Chicago Bears and Soldier Field. It just seems like you can't imagine them playing anywhere else. Uh, but the only thing about you know being in Soldier Field is the Bears organization just doesn't have a lot of power. They don't, they don't really have a lot of autonomy to. Uh, make some decisions, do some things. Uh, there are a lot of the funding that, that comes from being an owner of a stadium and a team that the Bears really don't have. And if they were able to move to um, Arlington Heights or where, wherever it is that they would move, it would give them, for the first time, a lot of autonomy from start to finish. Uh, so uh, they could really affect the game in another way and uh, I think the, the money would work a lot differently. They would have more power and um, get more of the share of the, uh, the money. Hey, sports fans, if you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.